Talk North listeners, we have a deal for you through our friends at Bite Squad, BiteSquad.com, and the Bite Squad app. Use the promo code FOOTBALL anytime between December 27th and January 2nd. Use the promo code FOOTBALL, uppercase, to get $5 off, off your food order of $20 or more. That's $5 off orders of $20 or more. Go to BiteSquad.com, the Bite Squad app. Use the promo code FOOTBALL. We appreciate everybody who has supported uh, our relationship with Bite Squad. We appreciate Bite Squad for sponsoring the programs. And here is the program. It's that time of the year. Yes, it's hockey season, but more importantly, it's time to count Russo's watches. Yeah. It is the holiday season. I'm sure he either gifted himself or was given a gift of a watch. Maybe it was a wooden watch. Maybe it was plastic. Maybe it was lava. I don't know. But this is the time of the year Michael ends up with something new on his wrist. What do we got? No, this one's still the same one. Okay. And that's the thing. I that's always nice wear one. the same watch. So I don't yeah, know you why. have one really nice watch. I don't but know why. I remember you I told you I bought those Instagram watch, the watch off Instagram, and I accidentally <laughs> like, bought two of them. In itself, sounds yeah. like such a good idea. Yeah, no, I know. And I accidentally bought two of them, so they both arrive. <laughs> they both do look identical. Um, so I put one on my uh, wrist today, and it almost fell off, so I immediately texted uh, John Hedges from Fixology. I'm like, uh, you know that watch I bought on Instagram at the next podcast? Can you take some links off? Like, ten of them. Um, and I, it's not like I'm you know, an overly sunder person, but this thing just went... So it's a good-looking watch. I just don't know how long it's going to work. Well, now you have a watch for yeah. each wrist and each well, ankle. Let me, like, so we should do something. I can you either, have a neck I can, watch. Yeah. So I got to give away a watch. I texted my brother. He's like, no, thank you. <laughs> Uh, so I'm either going to give it to a friend or maybe we have like a podcast. That'd be kind of cool. Like, you know, uh, you know what we should do is we should give the, the second watch to Clyde for having to come out to every single oh, podcast. I, I think we should just give Clyde like gifts every time he shows up. <laughs> Clyde, tell us what you want, man. We'll, yeah. we'll suck up to you. Yeah. Um, I should actually do that. I should see if Clyde wants it. Absolutely. I guess he's going to be like, uh, <laughs> Where did he buy this? <laughs> Maybe that's what we do. Maybe we give Clyde so, gifts he doesn't want yeah. every time he shows up. Yep. Uh, hey, we have, we have a studio audience. Uh, my wife, Stacy, who handles the books for Talk North, is just showing up. So uh, we get, you know, now we get to be nervous. Yeah. Know, because, because I don't, we know, have an audience. Having girls around really yeah. kind of yeah. scared, intimidates me. Uh, let me go ahead and introduce the show. This is uh, the Russo Suhan Show, the long-running show on TalkNorth.com. Uh, thanks to Michael for hanging in here so long as we built the listenership. The last three days, our listenership is about 185,000 listens, which is way more than we have expected when we started off this modest enterprise. Thanks to our sponsors, uh, Bite Squad. By the way, Bite Squad has a deal until the morning of January 2nd. Use the promo code FOOTBALL to get $5 off any order of $20 or more. BiteSquad.com or the Bite Squad app. Please do it uh, for your sake and for ours. Appreciate it. Longtime uh, sponsor, Twill in the Dining Galleria, twillmn.com. WizKids.tech, your downtown Minneapolis tech firm. Uh, great people to work with. Delano's Pizza, our next couple of live shows, January 9th and January 28th, 6 p.m. at Delano's Pizza. Please come out and have, a fun, have fun with us. Uh, FixologyRepair.com. John Hedges is working on my tablet right now. And Tony Hoagland, your State Farm agent, Champlin, who handles my insurance and Michael's. Uh, quick things. Uh, if you'd like to advertise with us, you can reach me at talknorthpodcast at gmail.com. Uh, thanks to our producer, Brandon Morton. And please download before you listen. All right. January 9th, did you mention that? Yes. Okay. January 9th. Michael never listens to the show. Well, no, actually, it was funny. Stacy, your wife, came over and looked at my watch and, and, and mouthed wow to me. <laughs> and I wanted to... I wanted she to, missed the whole episode, yeah, part I, of the episode about to, the watch. I did want to tell Stacey that I didn't buy a Breitling on, uh, on Instagram. The two Instagram watches uh, that came don't fit, so I have to get them fixed. Okay, so. now, now you know, Stacey knows I have a guitar obsession, and, mm-hmm. I, and by the way, she gave me a beautiful I don't watch. have a watch obsession. I just kind of yes, like what they do. look like. The thing is, is that like, I don't know why I bought this, because yes, ne- I never want to take this one off. That's my point. Yeah. But here's here's the point I'm making. I have a guitar obsession. I admit it, first of all. Mm-hmm. Second of all, Stacy has bought me two beautiful guitars for presents. And like I think I'm done. I think yeah. I've got no, I've got but but if I ever buy another guitar, Stacey said I'm not. If I ever buy another guitar, it's gonna be 
different and it's going to be beautiful. It's going to be something to use all the time. You're buying watches you'll never wear. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> the first step is admitting you have oh a problem. My God. All right, let's do a little hockey talk here. Yeah. Uh, so the Wild goes in the tank and then out of nowhere goes to Winnipeg and wins a, a pretty good game. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Winnipeg looked flat the game they before did. against the New Jersey Devils. Was it New Jersey? No. Who who they play? Oh, Calgary. Uh, the game before as well. So I just, I don't know. I, I just, uh, I don't want to do it again. You know, like, that's the thing. I don't want to sit there like, wow, they're back. They went into Winnipeg and made uh, Mark Scheifele and Blake Wheeler look slow. I mean, you know, like, they did it one game. They played an impressive road game. But now, uh, you know, uh, today they're playing the Penguins. Do it again. Um, they usually play the Penguins well at home, not so much in Pittsburgh. Um, and, then, uh, and then you have a four-game road trip coming up at Toronto, best team in the league. Or not, sorry, Tampa's the best team in the league, but one of the most powerhouse teams in the conference, uh, in the Eastern Conference. And then you go to Ottawa, which should be a very winnable game. I watched them, they're awful. Um, and then Montreal, you have a couple days to prepare for them. And then, uh, and then a second of back to back in Boston, which, you know, they're a good team, but they're, injury, they're, in, they're demolished injury wise, and the Wild usually play well in that building, um, except for last year when they had the closed door meeting. <laughs> um, okay, I just. Everything I just said, forget. <laughs> but I guess my, my, the overall point of what I'm saying is, yes, impressive win in Winnipeg, but they had lost nine of 12, 10 of 13 before that. Uh, do it again. Let's see if they're really out of this, or do they just revert back to being uh, you know, a team that's falling out of the playoffs. And they put themselves in a position where that's sorry. That's, that's, that's the cynicism we have to give them. They won that night in Winnipeg, and it did nothing for them in the standings. They remained four points back because everybody else is either having three-point games or winning above them in the conference. So they're in a position where this is what they've done. Nico Koivu said it perfectly after the game, is that, is that like, look, you know, the good win, but do it again and again and again, and that's the position they put themselves in where they got to go win eight in a row. They really do. I mean, that's the only way. Now, the good news is teams like Winnipeg are starting to, you know, fall back. Nashville has been awful. Um, Nashville's lost six in a row. They can't win on the road. Um, so, so they are coming back to the pack, but, but still the Wild have put themselves in a position where they've, they've got to go on a run here. How's Bruce doing? Uh, you know, he's doing better. He's doing better uh, since I told him the other day that his job is safe. <laughs> well, it's like, nice oh. of you. Yeah, he's like, oh, thank you. You know, <laughs> I'm worrying about, you know, like, so, uh, but, uh, you know, I mean, hey, when you lose 10 of 13 and you have a GM that's, that hasn't been able to make a trade yet and you know that probably put the heir apparent to Bruce on the bench with him, uh, hey, you know, you just never know when that could break. And, uh, but, uh, but from what I'm told by, by, you know, sources that would know is that Bruce is safe. Although Chuck was safe a week before he wasn't safe, so I'll just point that out. Yeah. Um, so, but hey, big win in Winnipeg. Now they got to continue it. Um, and it, look, it's up to the players on the team. I wrote into my story after the game in Chicago. There's one common denominator with this team that that conti- continues to uh, make us want more, and that's the players. It's not the coach. They did this under Mike Yo. They did this under you know Torch. Obviously, did get them in the playoffs. But remember. Um, let me see if I can put this. Well, I mean, they backed into the playoffs. They lost five. They were on fire, then lose five in a row to go into a playoff series against the Dallas Stars. And then Dallas Stars, who have missed the playoffs eight of the last ten years, Handling. their only uh, playoff uh, series win in the last ten years was against Minnesota. So, like, like look, this is the core. Um, and so, to me, it's on them. Uh, there are a lot of guys not playing well right now or not delivering uh, Grandland. You know, one goal in his last 20 games. I mean, come on. Not a superstar. <laughs> Sorry, um, Mary. You know, Zucker. Um, that's not Mary. That's uh, Philip. Philip. I think even, I think, I think Mary just thinks he's cute. Well, okay. Now, now you put things in perspective for me. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, you know. And he is cute. Um, so, you know, that, that's the point. Zucker, you know, needs to be better. Stahl needs to be much better. Just doesn't look good lately. Um, Coyle's been playing great, but he, look, he is what he is. Scored an awesome goal the other night, but but he's not a scorer. Um, and it's funny, you know, in a lot of ways, if we just would accept Coyle for this point, what he is, he's actually a good player. 
right? But we all just, just kind of we put him into the position. I've I've said this about Coyle before. To me, he's Rob Niedermeyer. And when we all accepted that Rob Niedermeyer wasn't twenty six goal scorer that he was in ninety five, ninety six, I believe it was. Then all of a sudden we said, holy mackerel, this guy is one of the best checking forwards in the league and can lead you to a cup the way that he did uh, uh, Anaheim in 2007 on that Paulson and uh, Sammy Paulson, Rob Niedermeyer, Travis Moen line. Um, I can't believe I remember that. And then, but, you know, we kind of accepted that. But Coyle, it's like we all just put him in the list of, you know, Niederreiter, Zucker, Granlund, you know, Dumbo, all these, you know, young core guys. And, you know, maybe we just got to accept what he is. Uh, let's get to the Dallas situation next. I know we have a Twitter question about that. I do want to thank Twill in the Dining Galleria, Alden Shoes, Peter Millar Crown Shop. I bought a lot of Johnny O stuff there. Uh, I bought a lot of uh, some beautiful Stenstrom shirts that are really gorgeous. Hickey Freeman, they just have all kinds of stuff. And they have, what? what? I'm just thinking something. Uh, so I was talking to Shep Harder the other day, mm-hmm. the Wild Assistant GM, and he started telling, uh, he listens to the podcast apparently. And uh, he was telling me that Scott Dayton used to like just, just rifle pucks at him uh, as a young goalie. <laughs> and one day he like snapped and went after Scott. So I'll be interested in if he remembers this. You, uh, I, I can't, um, Shep played it, I'm, I'm horrible. I've written an awesome feature on him when I was at the Strib, and it was either Breck or Blake, and, uh, and then he went on to play college hockey. He was a goalie. Uh, well, I know, listen, Scott's such a big sports fan. Yeah. Shep, if you go, go to uh, Twill, stop by and see Scott. He would love to talk hockey with you. He'd love to show off his shop. He's very proud of what he, what he has over there, and he loves talking sports. So just stop in, yeah. see Scott Dayton at Twill in the Dining Gallery, and tell him we said hello. Jim usually doesn't like to shop for clothes. I don't like it when he shops for clothes either because he used to buy stuff I'd want to throw out. That's why I'm so glad he's found Twill in the Edina Galleria. He likes shopping there because of the comfortable environment and the friendly staff. He finds clothes that actually fit him properly and are high-quality brands that will look great for years, whether he's golfing or working. Our favorites so far are Peter Millar, Johnny O, and Barber. We spend our money at Twill because we love the clothes, and we love the no-pressure shopping. Drop by Twill in the Edina Galleria for the best shopping experience and best clothes you'll find in the Twin Cities. All right, I know that, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I know. Uh, I do have a question on here. Let me uh, find it about the Dallas situation. Oh, uh, we got a long Philip Kallenberg question. That'll be fun. No. Uh, okay, somebody on here. Admitting that he's not a superstar, Gremlin, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> somebody on here asked about Dallas. I'll just ask you, what's going on in Dallas? Well, I mean, what a mess. Uh, first of all, to preface this all, so um, hopefully everybody has read this by now. Um, the CEO of the team, who is the equivalent of Matt Makeup for the Wild. So this is the business CEO. And Matt's this like a Matt- typical... CEO, yeah, he's, he's mild not, mannered. He's behind the scenes, yeah. and and but again, the equivalent would be when I guess when I say it like Matt Maka, uh, what I'm saying is non hockey ops. Right. So the guy that Craig Leopold employs to run the business side of the team, that is what the owner of the Dallas Stars employs Jim Lights to do, and uh, so so non hockey ops. Um, he after a victory in which they had won their third and five games, including over Minnesota, by the way. After going into Nashville and shutting them out, he texts the beat writer, or he has, this is even more awkward, he has the media relations person text the beat writer saying, uh, Jim Lights would like to meet with you at 12.15. Well, the, the Athletics, um, Sean Shapiro, wasn't on the road trip, so he was able to go meet with him face-to-face where the, and this is odd, the team beat writer couldn't go because he was on the road and the Dallas Morning News writer who's on the road couldn't go. So they did it by phone. And so that's why the two stories look totally different, which actually to me made it more awesome because then the athletic writer got a one-on-one with him where he was able to drop all the F-bombs, the guy said. But then the Dallas Morning News had a great story that had different quotes and, more, and sometimes more damning quotes. Wow. So if you combine the two stories together, you're like, holy shit, horse bleep which is what the word that he kept on using in the athletic story. And what he did is he just annihilated Ben and Sagan, which, by the way, I've been doing on this podcast for Yes, you have. Years. I give you credit. Um, so, just, so, just to get, so that's the preference to start the story. Just to let all Wild fans know, I took advantage of sending the story to Craig Leopold and Matt Maka. I asked Matt Maka, I said, hey, any chance you're available for an interview today? <laughs> and he's like, no, I think I'll be on the sidelines. And then I, and then I sent it to Craig Leopold, who was vacationing, and uh, he w- was bl- 
baffled by it. He just couldn't believe that an owner would have essentially his CEO do this. Um, and it is. It's just crazy. It is. I mean, it's nuts. It put, it put everybody into an awkward position. So it puts Ben and, ben and Sagan in an awkward position. It puts the media relations department who, you know, usually your job is to protect the players into an awkward position because they clearly orchestrated that behind the scenes. Okay, and then um, and then the next day, Ben and Sagan's got to stand in front. Now the NHLPA is.